Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. It's been a while. School is finally out and I had a chance to finish a card that I started weeks ago. Boy, those last few weeks of school for a teacher. Whew. I made this card with the Classic Petunia collection. It's very simple. I just took one of the six by sixes and some of the beautiful stamps and dies and the beautiful classic petunias themselves. And on the inside, another of the six by sixes. Very simple and easy. And I thought I would show you how to create a pink version. What do you think? Let's go for pink. All of these things you can find at huckleberryherbs.com. And now that I'm on vacation and have the time to handle it, I would be watching because I have a funny feeling that it's time for a sale. So all of you heartfelt creations lovers and I have graphic 45 stuff coming in and boy I'm gonna have to get on those new oct distressed oxide inks aren't I? So um, watch for that. So the classic petunia, the small one, the large one, the bouquet, and the small and large dies and the bouquet dye, sorry about the glare, warm lipstick, some pink sparkle, art glitter glue, my fave, a little seam binding, which I always use on fabric, some tacky glue, and this, I love this, this is new from Heartfelt, this is, what do they call this, uh, stack and store daubers, set of six, uh, these wonderful stacks, isn't that cool? And what's neat about them is that they're slightly raised in the center. So you can you can get into, and then when you change in colors, you just go like this. So you can actually, mine are a little mixed up right now. I have purples and green, and I'm going to put some pinks in. But you can mix and match them once you could have all your different colors of green together. And they're so cool. They just take up no space and are easy to put on your desk. I really like these. So... First things first, card base, uh, right down the center, six inches, okay, and that gets our card base, so this is going to be the front, so I'm going to get that on. That neat. All right, let me get this onto the front. I love my glue because I can make mistakes and fix it because it's still pliable. All right, so let's start with our flowers. We're going to color these. Just rub it in there. And then come in here and get the pink on. Get the pink on. There we go. Two seconds. Done. Now I'm not worried about the edges, but I am trying to leave a little space where I'm going to be putting the green on. And see, so if I had my big Tim Holtz dauber, I wouldn't be able to get in here so well and separate the leaves from the flowers. And I don't care about the edges again because I'm going to die cut this. They have a lovely die cut for this. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to do the corner. And again, for the most part, I don't have to worry too much about touching the green. It would be a catastrophe if I touch it anyway, but it's nice to try and put a little detail in. There you go, in two seconds, that's done. And I said I'd need three of them, but you know what? When the die cut goes across these, I'm going to end up with some extras. So I'm just going to do it. Let's use the cracked pistachio. And just get these all greened up. Yeah, that's nice with the pink. Good job, Tim Holtz. Love the Distress Oxides. 
so many good videos out there on using them. And they have dye and pigment. So if you haven't heard, uh, you can emboss with them, you can stamp with them, and then when you wet them, you can put layers on without making mud. They're just really a lovely new additive to our art supplies. Isn't that cute? I like it. Okay. Here they are, all cut and ready to go. So now let's get some of these shaped, just so it has some natural. Now to me, petunias, the blossoms head out, the petals head out. So I'm creating that outward movement on the back. And you can wet your paper if you want, it makes it more pliable, makes the fibers a, a little bit easier to maneuver and you could use even the bigger one yeah that feels better okay so and then in the middle do the next size down just a little curve to all the petals of the flower to give it some shape And in the middle, let's do a small one. Now with the small one, you can see that it's cut, but they have these little notches and it doesn't hurt to just take them all away so that you can maneuver the petals. So I'm just taking the edge off that, which opens the flower up. Okay, and we can use the small one with this. Yep. Here you go, that only took two seconds. As a matter of fact, I'm going to come back and just make sure they're really pressed in the center. These flowers are not difficult at all. The petunias were made quite well. I mean, I'm going to be fighting a petal or two that doesn't want to do what I want it to do. When you get towards the end, you have to make sure you catch enough of the flower. And I just hold it for a second. You can use a hot glue gun. Let's do this little guy with a hot glue gun so you can see the difference. Plus, it's just going to make it easier. All right. One little drip. That's all it's going to take. And we're done. Of course, be very careful because this is extremely small. Little drip. done and it's okay if one of them comes loose because once you get them all decorated up put on your card got your pretty glitter the fact that they opened up might actually look more natural depending you're just trying to get the basic idea. You really do need the tiniest bit of glue. The more glue you put on, the longer you're going to be holding it to dry. And like I said, if you're using a hot, hot glue gun, be careful. This is really finger dependent. Can't really use some kind of spatula or something like this. All right, I'll clean up that other glue once it's all finished having its moment drying. And I will finish up. We need a couple more small and maybe another medium. And I'll be back. 
The last thing I'm going to do, which uh, as far as shaping goes, which I've already done to all these, I saved the biggest one so that you could see it. Um, these have little cuts in here, and it helps to, you can use your finger, you could use a pencil, or any object that you would like to, just to get this to look like the petunias actually do, because as I said, they have a outward movement with their petals. So just taking a moment to do something small like that gives it a little bit more of a realistic, reminiscent of the actual flower look to it. And something I do that I don't see other people do too often, but I like to press on the bottom if I can without damaging, just to create a flat space so that when I go to put the petals, or the flower on the paper, I might want to lean it like this. It might need to be up, but these get quite dimensional for putting on your cards and getting them a little bit flatter can be helpful. To shape the stamen, I'm going to roll these in one direction. So I'm doing every other. And then I'm going to flip it over and roll the other ones in the opposite direction. And I'll do the same with the larger one. Oops. takes just but a few seconds and it won't stay perfectly like this, but it helps. To create more natural look in that it's imperfect. Then I just have a small paintbrush and I'm going to put that right here and begin to curve this around the paintbrush. One little dab of glue on the end. Those are ready. Now for the glitter. This is where the art glitter glue really comes in handy because it's just great at getting a very fine line because I've decided to just edge it with the glitter. And of course we'll be doing pink. And I find it's easier to just do about half of it. Put the glitter on. So pretty. Yeah, so these lend themselves to all kinds of flower making. And I like their shape for doing something like this, highlighting the edges and adding some glitter. Very lovely. And this is a beautiful rose toned pink. So I could have come back and done some ink or something, but I really wanted these to sparkle. And the next one, and I'm taking advantage of the shape that that little cut in creates a nice place to put some dimension, some interest. I 
All right. So I'll get the rest of these glittered up on the petals. And then I'll do the next glitter job because I do have one more glitter aspect I would like to add. Another place where I wanted to add some of the pink glitter is around these. And again, this art glitter glue is just perfect for this. It comes out so thinly that you can, almost like a pencil, draw around. And it really, it's the tip, which is sold separately. I have them in the store. But the glue is very, very good, too. I haven't run into anybody that doesn't like the art glitter glue, I'll tell you that. And usually, I actually just take a pencil or a brush or something and tap it. And it gets off the glitter. Much better than trying to hit it with your fingers like I just did. Okay, and then we'll do this one. And you could shape these two, just turn it over and give them a little poof. And we'll see a piece of the die cut that needs to come out. Okay. But the way I made this card, I'm not going to be concerned with that. And this is meticulous, but those of us who like crafting and making flowers, it really does make the card very special. And it's lovely to get your mind off your problems. Right now my problem is my whole kitchen is torn apart. Oh my gosh, I have nothing but, not even walls, not even walls down there. They're just ugly bean things, okay? So I have to come up here to the craft room or go out to the garden and try to forget the fact that the kitchen is missing. <laughs> husband's working very hard down there trying to give us a kitchen to live with. All right, so this is the last of the pink. And like I said, just a little tap with a brush or something, right? So we have everything done in this pretty pink which I hope it's showing up because it's such a lovely ro I love the color of that glitter. Now we're going to take all these flowers and add a gold center. And I'm just going to swirl around get the and that's another reason why you know taking the time to flatten the back with this particular project was good because I knew I was going to come back and want a flat surface to add the gold glitter. And just put a little in each center. All right. And a quick tap. pretty gold center. So definitely wait until your edges are dry enough so that you won't destroy them or mix up your colors. And I'm not going to do every leaf, but I did like the idea of the swirls. And I probably shouldn't do this on the paper that I'm actually going to pour the glitter on, but I'm doing it because I have a camera on it so that you can see. Did I get them all? There's one I did not get. Okay. And of course, it, um, it would be good to have a pair of tweezers this so that when you lift them up, but I'm just going to try to lift it with one of the green leaves that does not have 
spinning on it. There we go. Nice and sparkly. And one more. Just through the swirls. One more time. So this is just one card idea and I thought I'd share with you. Sometimes I get comments and some of my lovely customers ask me to do things as well as I just like to share. Okay. Lastly, these stamen. I'm going to separate these so that they aren't touching. And then I'm just going to come in. You don't have to do both sides, but if you want to be really picky, you can. And just right on that dot on the end. Just a couple on the back. Okay. And then put some gold on the tips. Now I'm just going to take a little of my worn lipstick, which I'm very excited. They came out with a whole new 12 set of the Distress Oxides. Yes, I will be working on getting those into the store and doing some videos with them and sharing that with you. I'm kind of over pinking here, but that's okay. Can't have too much pink. <laughs> All right, just wanted to. So I guess we're going to make a birthday card. Alright, now that I have made a bow with a little pink seam binding, I think I have everything here to put this card together. Let's start with this lovely background. Some glue. doing this fairly quickly so I'm trying not to touch the other side in case any of that glitter is still drying although this glue dries fairly quickly so it's pretty easy to move along with your project so just a little dab on the edges and I'm going to place this lovely piece up here in the top just like on the purple one. Just depends on what you want, but if you're going to have an envelope that it slips in, you may want to make sure that you don't have any, like this flower, sticking off the edge. Okay. There we go. And then let's add the corner piece that goes down here. There we are. And then the medium flower right here. And I'm just going to press it down. A little bit. To make sure it's going to stay. And a couple of the small flowers over here. On either side. So I don't want to cover up all of my work on the other pieces. Okay. See, like glue. A moment to adjust things. As a matter of fact, I want to lift it up and just see. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. And then I'm going to put my seam binding bow down first. I always like to use the tacky glue 
just because it's thicker when it comes to working with material or fiber. Right about there. And I'm just going to direct that and come back and adjust it afterwards in the largest flower. Lots of glue. I don't know what parts will catch, so I'm just gluing all the parts, but I want to direct it this way. Alright, two stamen up there. Place that one over here. This last one right here. And there we go. A completed card. Okay, so there's the finished card. I think it came out pretty. I really like pink. And it turned out to be a good thing to use that card stock. Nice and strong. Beautiful in the middle. Didn't take too long to do this. The flower shaping really is what took the longest. So, here we go. A pink and a purple version of the classic petunias. Now, a few announcements before I leave. Today is July 8th, 2017. And next week, at the end of the week, I expect to have Master Detective. For those of you that like Graphic 45, the 12x12s are coming in. And I will also have French Country and Secret Garden. I had to restock because people liked that so much. They always have. Um, so I expect those to come in as well, the deluxe editions. Heartfelt Creations is putting out its Christmas festive holiday collection. Oh my gosh. There are 12 new Distress Oxides. Are you kidding me? And um, how about a sale? It's been a while. I think huckleberryherbs.com, which you can get all of these things and your Distress colors if you like them, plus many other tools and your glue at huckleberryherbs.com. I'll leave a link below. Just click on that little arrow there so that you can spread out the messages that are sent from your YouTubers and uh, you can click over and go check this stuff out at the store yourself. Heartfelt Creations comes in mostly at about 10% less so if I have a 15% sale that's 25% yeah okay so don't forget to watch for that because I think I'm going to be sending out some info on a sale at the store yay! Uh, I have classic wedding projects to do. There's people waiting for me to finish that mini album, Italiana Riviera. I'll be doing that and I'll be back with more garden videos and more. I'm so glad to be home for the summer. I hope you liked this. Till next time everybody, this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. God bless.